Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Third time's a charm. I'm recording in kind of a, a semi-public spot in the house, in my new place right now, because it's the place with the best internet. Um, at least of the, the spots that we had to choose from. Um, but it means that every so often somebody decides to walk through. There's literally only me and one other person right now in the house. Still, as soon as I start recording, it seems like that's a signal that that other person needs to walk through. So, <laughs> um, I tried the pause and restart recording option, and uh, I couldn't remember what I was talking about because the interruption was so long. Anyway, so we're going to try this again. <sighs> I... Welcome to my channel. My name is Jamie, and I read a lot of books. There we go. So, today I am um, working out what I'm going to be reading for 2024, specifically for a game in a reading group on Goodreads called Reading 1001. This group and one other that I'm in on Goodreads are focused on reading all the books on the box all's 1001 books you must read before you die. Um, these are um, several editions of a list of 1001 books that, according to the people who helped put the list together, are books people should read before they die. Um, or at least one would hope that they took the title into consideration when putting their recommendations in. Sometimes I wonder. Um, the box laws list was put together by, according to Wikipedia, um, a hundred, let's see, by over 100 literary critics worldwide. So that's, that sounds pretty good, right? Um, if you read through the bios of all the people who helped put it together, um, at least in the edition that I read through, and I haven't had a physical copy on hand of all the editions, so there may be some more um, worldwide involvement in the later editions, but the one I read through, basically cover to cover, was either 2006 or 2008, so it was pretty early. And all of the people in that list were academics from the same area of England most of them from Sussex University, which is where Boxall is. Um, the guy who compiled the list from all these recommendations um, and did the editing was Peter Boxall, professor of English at Sussex University. So that's the list. It has some problems with it. Um, certainly if that's all the books you're going to read, you're going to have a very biased list. Um, I grumble at the selections a lot. Um, especially why did they put that book in and not these other books by the same author and why didn't they include whatever author um, what always comes to mind for me is Ray Bradbury why is Ray Bradbury not on the list I and mean, I don't think Fahrenheit 451 is the best book by Bradbury but enough people know of it that I would have thought of all of the American authors that they left off, that's the one surely somebody thought to include Bradbury. I would have included Dandelion Wine and Something Wicked This Way Comes rather than Fahrenheit 451 or maybe in addition to. But there is no Ray Bradbury on the box sales list. The other list I'm working on simultaneously is the Guardian's 1000 Novels list which I didn't bother to look up on Wikipedia or um, Google it or anything. Um, so I don't really have a lot of background on it. I'll talk about it more later. But um, just to, to add it in now as one of the other things I'm working on reading, um, I have to have the lists on somewhere online or on a spreadsheet. Actually, I have both. Um, because keeping track of which books are on which list and, you know, which books are on the list versus just books that should have been on the list and are by the same author, it gets tricky. Um, and there's some overlap 
So it's not like there's a total of 2,001 books between the two lists. Um, there's actually 1,300 some books on the box all lists when you combine all of them. Um, plus the Guardian list, theoretically then it would be 2,300 some. Um, in actuality, there's a lot of overlap. Um, so if you read, you know, most of the popular Dickens, they'd work on both lists. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to read both lists and checking them off. I've got them on spreadsheets. I also am on uh, Goodreads in two groups for the box sales list and one group for the Guardian list. Um, and because both of those are British lists, and I'm obviously from my accent, um, an American, and you know definitely from the American academic tradition, um, I am more aware probably because I'm reading two different lists that are both British of the shortcomings of both when it comes to American English language literature. Um, there's a lot of things that get missed or or they just don't seem to be aware of the better books by those authors or yeah anyway. Um, that said, um, these are a great way of introducing yourself to a lot of authors that at least when they were current were impactful or people really liked them. Um, they're probably worth trying out. You never know which ones you're going to like. Um, I really, it turns out, like Evelyn Waugh. Not an author that I would have imagined just, you know, without extra information um, that I would like. And I knew of Evelyn Waugh and my sister, um, who tries to be a bit more of a literary snob than I am, um, she owns it and she's quite happy to be a snob when it comes to books. Um, it comes with all, all sorts of really interesting new books. She's a great source for information about what's coming out, but um, she's been discovering uh, murder mysteries. I think, wow, some of these are actually really well written, and I enjoy them. Um, yeah, it's fun having siblings like that. I read murder mysteries, uh, which actually is good. The Guardian list, um, it's broken down into different sections, and there is a section about crime, and there is a section for sci-fi fantasy. Um, so it's a little bit broader than the, the box sales list. Box sale reminds me of school. It's like, you know, all of the different literature classes you could take in college, all of their required reading lists for a couple decades squished into one. Um, so it, it misses out on some of the genre fiction. And some of the fiction that's sort of genre is like the really weak um, general fiction or literary fiction form of that genre. Um, so yeah, there's crime. You get Wilkie Collins. Wilkie Collins is good. Um, John Buchan, um, Raymond Chandler, but we don't get a lot of other um, very successful and well-written murder mystery genre and crime genre fiction because it's not literary enough or, you know, it doesn't even spring to mind for that population to put it on a list. Anyway, so how many tangents have we done now? Oh my goodness. This is what happens when I have to record a video more than once. Um, so what I'm putting together today is a list of 24 books for the Reading 1001 group on Goodreads, reading the Box Sells 1001 books. Um, this game um, has you put together a list of 24 books and number them, 1 through 24, those books then, you are not going to read them until their number is picked. So each month, the group, you know, pulls a number by randomizer, and that is the number of book that you read for that month to get extra points. Um, I did terrible the last two years with the whole points thing, to the point where I really stopped even recording this year and, and reading books that are on the list, and sometimes I'll post reviews on the group just for the heck of it. Um, and I participate in discussions, you know, the Clarissa discussion, just because I finished it. I might as well chat about it. Um, but 
I'm going to really try next year to get back into it because I used to be a lot better at you know, participating fully. Um, so I pulled up my list of the books from this year for that challenge. And I'll read off to you real quick what the 24 books were that I was supposed to have read this year, or at least I was supposed to have read 12 of them um, that were picked by Randomizer. So the total list is the, chap the Charter House of Parma by Stendhal, The Master of Ballantry by Robert Louis Stevenson, Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray, uh, Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden, The Luciad by Louis de Camus, Camus, I don't know how to say his name. Um, I'll look that one up. Uh, Castle Richmond by Anthony Trollope, The Last Chronicle of Barset by Anthony Trollope, the House by the Medlar Tree by Giovanni Verga. The Adventurous Simplicissimus. Simplicissimus. Okay. By Hans von Grummelshausen. Tono Bungay by H.G. Wells. The Let by Charlotte Bronte. The Glimpses of the Moon by Edith Wharton. Hard Times by Charles Dickens. The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Shirley by Charlotte Bronte, Bunner Sisters by Edith Wharton, House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielski, Danielewski. I'm sure there's a way that's pronounced smoothly in like, Polish. Um, anyway, The Underdogs by Mariano Azuela, Agnes Gray by Anne Bronte, Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton, The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, the Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, The Shadow Line by Joseph Conrad, and Lord Jim by Joseph Conrad. You will notice a trend in this list that a lot of them are older, like public domain older. And there was a method to this. Most of them are available as ebooks on Project Gutenberg. Um, if you participated in the rating Project Gutenberg uh, event last month, um, yeah, I was totally already on board with that because I've been working through all of the Box Elves 1001 books that are on Project Gutenberg, um, and theoretically I was going to finish 12 of them this year from that list. I did actually finish some of the books from that list, but not in the months they were picked for. The books that were actually selected were Tono Bungay, the Moonstone, Adventurous Simpl Simplicissimus, Hard Times, Ethan Frome, Bunner Sisters, Glimpses of the Moon, Villette, Castle Richmond, Agnes Grey, The Underdogs, and The House by the Medlar Tree. So <clears throat> those were the books that I could have gotten extra points if I'd read them the month they were selected for. Um, did I do that? No, I did not. Um, but once I realized that I was totally not going to be winning any extra points by doing this, um, I gave up and was like, okay, I'm going to list the books that were already selected, which is why I have them nicely, you know, readable like that. Um, and then I can read those books this year anytime I feel like it, because they've already been selected. I already missed the months they were selected for. Um, so I'm not losing out on any points by reading them out of their selected month. Uh, I already lost those points. So out of this list, I finished Tono Bungay, The Moonstone, Hard Times, uh, Villette, and Agnes Grey. And I also finished um, Shirley, which wasn't selected, but I you know, just gave up and I was going to read the Bronte books. Um, and yes, I finished Hard Times. Um, yeah, so I finished a few of the books off the list. It was good. Um, I might not have thought to read them if it hadn't been for the game, so I didn't lose out at all. But for this year, I, you know, for this coming year, I want to actually try and do this properly, like actually read the books when they're selected so I can get my extra points. Because this is a, a high points potential for this group. Um, so the way it works is the first couple months you get an extra point for reading the book that was selected when it was selected for. But then the next couple of months you get like two points extra 
so long as you haven't missed one yet. And if you can keep going through the full 12 months, there are extra points to be had for making it all the way to where you get like four extra points or five extra points, something like that, per book that you're reading for the selected month. So it has the potential to win a lot of points. What do we do with these points? Not very much. You get extra votes um, for things like the monthly reading selections. and um, So it's not like there's a lot to do with the points. I think there's there have been drawings and things like that where you can use your points. Um, mostly it's just for bragging rights. But it, I like bragging rights. So the list I've come up with for 2024 so far um, removed all the ones I'd already read and some of the ones that I thought maybe I wasn't interested in for next year. So I'm going to be solidifying my list now and hopefully we'll come up with a list that I'm willing to post officially um, because we have until the 25th to select our official list for next year. So, I'm definitely keeping the Charter House of Parma. Um, that one's on Project Gutenberg, and I read The Red and the Black last year, something like that. I, I was the, the discussion host for it, um, so I definitely read it um, for that group. Uh, the Master of Ballantry is also on Project Gutenberg. I don't know much about it, but it might as well stay in there. Vanity Fair by Thackeray. Um, somebody this year was talking about it, like it was something that they really liked. Um, not on book two. In real life, I have a few friends that read this kind of stuff. And one of them was talking about Vanity Fair. So I'm going to leave that in there on the off chance that I might like it. If it doesn't get selected, the risk on this game is 12 of these books won't be selected and you won't know which ones those are until December. So whichever one you're going to read um, for this list, you better not want to read it for something else because you may not get to it. So, so there's a risk here. 12 of these I won't read next year just because they're not going to be selected unless I read them in December. There is that possibility. Um, I'm going to leave the Luciad, even though I can't pronounce the last name of the guy that wrote it. I'll figure it out by the time I read it. Um, Castle Richmond is also going to stay on there and the last Chronicle of Barset. Um, I, I don't really like Trollope all that much. But I read the long ones already. Um, I, I read He Knew He Was Right and Can He Forgive Her? Something like that. Um, and I think I read The Warden. Um, I read a few Trollops at this point. Um, I already know that they're a bit tedious and that most of the characters are not people that you'd like to actually interact with in real life because they're kind of awful and it's kind of hard to sympathize with a lot of the characters. Okay, so you can tell I'm not a Trollop fan. But I'd love to be done with Trollop. So we're going to leave those on there. House by the Medlar trade did get selected, but I'm not going to get to it. So it's going to stay on there. Also, the Adventurous Simplicissimus is going to stay on there because I, you know, I was selected. I didn't get to it. It might as well move on to the next one. Um, I picked up a few um, John Barth books from free shelves, like little free libraries. Um, so now that I have a couple of them, I might start on that author. I haven't read anything by him yet, but I have Giles Goat Boy, which I've added for number 10. And I also have The Floating Opera, which I've added at 13. Um, 11 is The Buddha of Suburbia, which I found at the bookshed up in a little mountain town near us. Um, so I got that one for a quarter, so that's in here. Uh, Rabbit Run by John Updike. Uh, the World According to Garp by John Irving. It's been selected for Books of the Month. 
It's been on my list several times. I've read I, half a dozen John Irvings at this point that are not on the list, but I still never get around to the world according to Garp. So I'm going to finish it. It's going to happen. Um, Moon Palace by Paul Oster. I never remember much about Oster's books after a month or so after I've read them, but I do generally like them while I'm reading them. So um, that one I picked up from a library's free shelf. It was deaccessioned at some point. So it's a good thing I found it because I was going to want that book. And if they deaccessioned it, it means they don't have it in their collection anymore. So I have it. Uh, Perfume by Patrick Suskind is at 16. Um, I think that one I got from the library's bookstore for two bucks. Um, or maybe in their biannual or is it biannual? Twice a, twice a year. Um, anyway, um, their book sale. So in any case, Perfume by Suskind. Um, House of Leaves by Danielus Danielewski. Um I've heard things about this book. Um, I might make sure to have a bottle of wine on hand before starting this one, because I might get into it a little easier with that. Uh, the Underdogs by Mariano Azuela. Um, I'm tempted to pull this one off so I can just read it, um, but I know I'm not going to get to it in December. So I'm going to leave it on the list and, you know, get to it eventually. It's on Project Gutenberg. Snow by Orhan Pamuk. Um, my sister really likes Pamuk, so she's been talking about him a lot lately. I don't remember where I put The Reader by Bernard Schlink. So it's on the list right now. If I'm going to swap out a book, that might be it, just because I have to figure out where I put it. Um, but it probably will stay on here. Fall on Your Knees by Anne-Marie MacDonald. This is one I got from a little free library a couple years ago, and I didn't actually remember that it was on the list. So I was thrilled when I saw it on there. Like, oh, I have this book. I just picked it up because it looked randomly interesting. Um, the Robber Bride by Margaret Atwood. I only have two books left to read by Atwood on the list. Um, Surfacing is the other one. I don't own it, but I do own a very sad and water damaged copy of The Robber Bride. So I'll read that one. Um, and The English Patient by Michael Ondatje, or Ondatje, I don't remember. Um, Afrikaans, is the J a Y sound, or a J sound, or something else? Anyway, um, I'm not sure if I still own a copy of The English Patient. I could have sworn I do. That's another one where I might have to swap it out. Because you do want to have them either on the internet where you can get to them or on your shelf where you have them so that when it's selected, you have it right there ready to go. Because you don't know when you're going to need it. So using interlibrary loan to order it, it may get there eventually, but maybe not when you're supposed to be reading it. The last book on the list is Lord Jim by Joseph Conrad. Um, my guess is if I need to swap out books, it'll be other things that are on Project Gutenberg. But, eh, we'll see here. Oh, I also, um, I realized that I have a three books in one um, edition of books by Maguib Mafuz, And two of those are on the 1001 list. So I might use those to swap out for um, the reader and the English patient. So it might be My Doc Ali and Miramar. Um, so anyway, that's my list of 24 books, more or less, that I won't be reading just whenever I feel like it, but I will hopefully read 12 of those books four extra points in 2024. Um, let me know if you have read the books off this list, if there are any that are glaring mistakes that I'm going to hate them, or vice versa. Um, yeah, and if you are also reading the 1001 books you must read before you die list, and I don't know about it yet, 
uh, let me know. Um, I will put links to the groups that I mentioned in the description. So if you are reading these lists and want to find other places to chat about these books with people, um, you can find those easily. Um, so I'm going to sign off because this is already going to be probably an hour and a half upload time where I'm at now. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying your reading day. Um, I obviously did not get to posting an update on my uh, reading sprints, uh, so I will do that later because I'm still reading books from that stack. So I will update later this evening probably with that. And in the meantime, happy reading everybody, and I will talk to you guys soon.